Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Norvell. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia's tourism sector is poised for a major rebound. Helen's daughter signs MOU with Export St. Lucia. And the Ministry of Health and Wellness is urging St. Lucians to quit tobacco use. St. Lucia's tourism sector is poised for a major rebound. Some 14,339 visitors to the island were recorded in May, with two-thirds of industry employees back at work and hundreds of accommodation properties reopening. All these tourism officials explain are positive indicators for St. Lucia's tourism sector. We get details in this report. St. Lucia's tourism sector is poised for a major rebound with 81% of the U.S. market already recovered. The ministries of tourism and health and wellness are working feverishly to ensure the safe reopening of the tourism sector. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries Honorable Dominic Fede during a recent press conference stated that the sector is off to a great start with a prediction of a very strong rebound in the month of June. This, the tourism minister explained, is signaled by a number of factors, including local accommodation properties reporting high levels of occupancy, almost 10,000 industry employees returning to work, the reopening of over 200 villas having received their COVID-19 license to operate, and some 120 more accommodation properties are being allowed to operate with only vaccinated guests. Honorable Fede also disclosed that talks with cruise officials have been positive and continue. We also are anticipating the return of the first cruise line to St. Lucia. Um, those discussions are still ongoing now. Uh, we want to make sure that we do everything to ensure that this is done in a safe way. And we're going to do this step by step to make sure that the amount of cruise passengers that are allowed on the island are manageable. This is a a very um, collective position that we have with the cruise lines uh, who themselves are looking at making sure that we have numbers that are manageable. So we're very, very close to um, announcing with more specificity the date by which we will have the first um, cruise call into St. Lucia. This will mean uh, a significant amount of good news for uh, vendors and taxi drivers and uh, duty-free employees and companies and uh, more numbers for sites and attractions and the whole list of um, uh, spin-offs in the tourism ancillary sector is going to many benefit significantly uh, from this. No effort to fully reopen the sector is being spared as the Ministry of Tourism is working with some 200 accommodation properties to become COVID-19 certified. Approximately 1,500 taxi drivers have been certified with the intention of getting an additional 4,000 tourism transportation providers certified, including H-plate holders, so as to get them back into operation. Car rental businesses are allowed to operate, providing services to only fully vaccinated individuals. Minister Honorable Fede also assured that the ministries are working assiduously to ensure the safe return of the cruise industry and the resulting livelihoods. However, the health and safety of all St. Lucians remain top priority. What we want to make sure is that this is done safely and that um, while we want to ensure that um, a lot of our vendors are, are participating in the economic benefits from the return of the cruise industry, uh, we certainly don't want to expose anyone to danger and we have to ensure that we are ready to do this. Um, there is a lot to consider vaccinated versus non-vaccinated passengers. Uh, the fact that not uh, a significant amount of people below the ages of 18 are vaccinated, for example, how do you treat those? There are a lot of questions that we need to answer very specifically to make sure that um, we can feel comfortable to do this. But I'm very confident, um, I continue saying to you, that we are um, going to reach an agreement with the cruise lines um, very soon on uh, a set of protocols that are mutually beneficial. St. Lucia Tourism Authority's Public Relations Manager, Jereen Georges, sharing in the Minister's optimism about St. Lucia's tourism projections, provided arrival figures.
for the month of May, we have definitely seen some uptick. Our weekends are especially busy as it relates to um, the Huronera International Airport. We know the changes that have been made to the, the various protocols, including that for vaccinated travelers. And definitely we're seeing about 50% of our arrivals um, being vaccinated. And so for the month of May, um, the destination welcomed a total of 14,339 visitors. And of course, our pro that did surpass our projections by 35%. And we're looking forward to, of course, like Minister said, a very busy summer period um, for the industry. The press conference was held on Wednesday, 16th June, 2021. From the Government Information Service, I am General Norvell. St. Lucia Distillers displays confidence in St. Lucia's economy with a $30 million expansion of its facilities in the Roseau Valley. The premier rum producer in the Eastern Caribbean over the past 18 months has built three new cellars with a capacity of storing 12,000 oak barrels. We get details in this report. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney headed the list of dignitaries, which included Bernard Hyatt, the president of Group Bernard Hyatt GBH, the parent company of St. Lucia Distillers. The occasion was the official opening of three new cellars built over the past two years with strict adherence to COVID-19 protocols. Prime Minister Chastney noted the commitment of GBH in spite of the global pandemic. And I want to thank you personally that despite what was going on with COVID. I am one person who does not take your commitment and your continu continuation for granted. I want to thank you very, very much. Bernard Hayat, the president of GBH, was present for the official commissioning of the new cellars, but it was his son, Rudolf, who provided the details of the project. Each of the cellars will contain nearly 3,700 oak barrels. They will bring the total capacity of St. Lucia distillers to more than 12,000 barrels. The construction of the new cellars is one of three projects airmarked by GBH since it acquired the distillery in 2016. The first ensured that award-winning rums produced by St. Lucia distillers got profiled and marketed globally. Another project is the development of a rum and heritage attraction in the Roseau Valley. This was welcomed by Member of Parliament for the area, Honorable Dominic Fede, who is also the Minister for Tourism. While we can boast of some of the finest beaches in the world, I think what makes us really sexy is to say to the world that we also have some of the finest blends. And that in itself is a big draw and makes us extremely attractive. And so congratulations to you and the entire rum industry for your continued evolution over the years. The Prime Minister also applauded the employer-employee relationship, noting the role of the National Workers Union. I'm very happy to see the relationship that you've developed with the workers. Um, this is a very important aspect to what we do in our country. It cannot be that we believe that we can succeed without bringing along the workers of this country. And so one, the investment you're making, the training you're making, and certainly the upgrading of the equipment, I know will augur very well for the persons who work here. The next major development at St. Lucia Distillers will be the Rum and Heritage Tour, which will be situated on a 25-acre site. It will incorporate the distillery and a sugar plantation. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leonce reporting. Helen's Daughters, an entity committed to lending support to rural women in agriculture, on Wednesday signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Export St. Lucia. Hermody Mark has details on the initiative. Helen's Daughters, an organization dedicated to providing support to rural women in agriculture, has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Export St. Lucia. The organization aids its members with the use of adaptive agricultural techniques, capacity building, and improved market access. Through the signing of this agreement, Helen's Daughters hopes to continue to empower women and enable them to play a more prominent role in the value chain of the agricultural sector. CEO of Helen's Daughters, Kiflin Karu, believes this is the start of a new era for rural women in agriculture. As a society, we often do not realize the integral um, role that women play from throughout the value chain, from raw production to marketing to processing. 
And as a result of our stereotypes, women have been cut out of a lot of opportunities in the agricultural sector, particularly in training, receiving finance, and capacity development. Um, and agriculture from yesteryear to even today still remains an important productive sector of ours. I mean, it employs about 21% of persons in the labor force. But when we break it down, 9% of that is women, whereas 12% of that is men. And when we speak of actually skilled labor, it's 2% of women being skilled workers, whereas there's only about 8% of men um, being skilled, which really drives down on this demonstration that at the end of the day a lot of there's a lot of need for investment and support in upskilling the labor force overall particularly in the agricultural sector but definitely in also focusing on the most margin, marginalized communities such as women and youth the signing of the memorandum of understanding between the two entities on june 16 2021 enables export saint lucia to provide technical support to helen's daughters and its members CEO of Export St. Lucia, Sunita Daniels, says they are committed to strengthening Helen's daughters in any capacity possible. One of the things we want to do with them is to really assist them with research, to help them with um, market access. There are a lot of things that they're doing that um, Export St. Lucia can really bring some um, expertise to, and we're really, really looking forward to working with Helen's daughters. I'm sure it will be a very fulfilling um, partnership and it's something we're so excited and we're really looking forward to seeing where it all leads. We really want to see more girls getting involved in, in agricultural activity, more teenage girls, more teenage women getting involved in agricultural activities. We want to, women to see agriculture as a very viable um, career that they can go into. And so with Helen's Daughters, we're hoping to do that. Some projects to be derived from the new partnership include the creation of a seed bank to aid farmers in the diversification of produce and the development of a virtual course for persons looking to tap into export markets. From the Government Information Service, I'm Hermody Mark reporting. The mentorship component of the Our Boys Matter program has advanced. June 2021 saw the pairing of beneficiaries with their mentors. In a brief ceremony for the pairing, the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF, facilitating agency for the program, says they were initially challenged with finding male figures to mentor the secondary school boys. Thankfully, members of a Christian sect, the Brotherhood of St. Andrew, availed themselves. This helped the SSDF meet its mentor quota for the program. There is no shortage of willing ladies to mentor, you know. There is no shortage of that. But there's a shortage of males. And we have, I, my personal belief is that because a lot of these boys have not been exposed to positive role models, that I think it is critical. And I've, I've battled a little bit with Miss Edwin and Miss Anthony and, you know, um, in terms of whether we should bring on board female mentors. And finally, I said, look, if we cannot get males, let's do females because some sort of mentorship is better than none. So I was very happy when the Brotherhood stepped forward and, you know, and willing to, to assist us with that. But make no mistake about it. These boys and young ladies, by the matter, by, for that matter, need the presence of positive male, male models in their life, role models. And it's for that reason that we're very happy that you are here. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer charged the young men to make the most of the mentorship program. They have decided it is important enough to spend their time with you. So here's what I need you to do, boys. I need you to make some very clear choices as to how you're going to be respectful of their time you're going to show gratitude for their time. You're going to engage in activities that is for your benefit, not necessarily for them. Because the benefactor, the beneficiaries are you. The responsibility that they've decided they want to shoulder is that of the society, that of your parents, more so your fathers. And if somebody decides it's important enough for me to spend time with you, respect that individual. 
The mentorship drive eventually attracted 45 mentors, exceeding the 23 needed for the ceremony's pairing session. The Our Boys Matter program is an ongoing initiative of the SSDF that offers resource support and mentorship for at-risk males at the secondary school level. St. Lucians are again being urged to quit tobacco use as it presents a severe threat to their health. More in this report from Jack Hinkson Compton. St. Lucia recently joined the rest of the world in observing World No Tobacco Day. The event, which was organized by the World Health Organization, seeks to discourage persons from tobacco use. This year's observances are being held under the theme, Commit to Quit. In a panel discussion held to mark the occasion, Senior Medical Officer for Non-Communicable Diseases, Dr. Shana Sear Filbert, reminded the public of some of the dangers of tobacco use. Smoking affects every organ in the body, especially your respiratory system. So of course you're inhaling smoke, your body was not made to inhale smoke. Um, and so the whole immune system of your respiratory system is affected. So smokers tend to be more prone to getting respiratory diseases like um, tuberculosis, they get um, flus, etc. Um, diseases like, like that more often than someone who does not smoke. In 2019 and 2020, St. Lucia enacted new legislation designed to reduce the number of public locations in which people can smoke. Deputy Director of the Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat, Joanna Joseph Henry, explained the intended benefits of the laws. The big, big concern right now is to try as much as possible to reduce the exposure, the initiation of our young persons into, into tobacco use. The Public Health Act was revised to allow the um, control of smoking in public places, in workplaces, enclosed places, um, enclosed public places, as well as outdoor public places. So the purpose of all of that is to reduce the exposure of individuals to tobacco smoke. The 2021 World No Tobacco Day observances also included the unveiling of a new mascot named Luther Lung, which was designed by a student of the St. Mary's College. For the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Jacques Hingson Compton. CARICOM Secretary General calls for resilient energy systems at costs citizens and businesses can afford. CARICOM News Times to San King English Francis has more. CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRock issued a call for partnerships to finance CARICOM's 20 billion U.S. dollars energy transition targets. Speaking at a high-level meeting on energy financing on May 27, he said small island developing states can respond better to common constraints that were worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic and the climate change with the help of accelerated clean energy transition. For this to happen, he said the region has to leverage the collective strengths of partners. In essence, a new type of Marshall Plan for the energy sector is needed. The CARICOM proposal around which today's dialogue is focused is only a part of what is required and outlines an investment pipeline of about 5 billion US. In the proposal, member states present projects that can support their ambitions to exploit cost-effective indigenous renewable energy sources, to improve their power grids, to increase the application of distributed energy resources, including energy efficiency measures, and to integrate electric vehicles into the transport system. The discussion attracted the participation of CARICOM ministers of energy, heads of financial institutions, bilateral development partners, and the private sector. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of Way On. Point de précaution. Et fait tout ça ou ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sale à dans un bassin de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou qu'à tuer panne. 
Kisi toilet bowl ou ka kole ou ni pou mette ten an di de bak la. Toilet bowl la ka kole si ou ka wè kole a de bowl la avant ou flosh li. An toilet bowl ki ka kole ka gaspye an chai glo. Servi an bom pito an hose pou lave moto ka. Le ou ka lave had, servi dlo wè se an pou ouze fle ou. Le ou sove dlo, ou ka bese manye a ou ka servi tepe ou an man. Sove dlo tout le ou ni an chans. Ek chanje tout dlo e pontan. Sa se an komisyon Hod Wasko. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Kweyol. Mesi yota, Janel. Mesi, madam, Dipatman, ki ni responsabilite pou informasyon an gouvernman setlesi, sa se GIS, a se repi televizyon nasyonal pe ya NTN, ka prezato Nouvelle a Kweyol. Prezato Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre cette ci on a Alan Chasney, qui a un projet de agrandissement de la compagnie saint louis de Stillers, qui est situé à Valais-Ozo, pour une mouvance de résilience par le secteur privé de la et qui est aussi généralement pour continuer à mettre confiance à l'économie. Le projet de plusieurs millions de dollars, c'est un bon qui a placé cette ci à une bonne position pour accorder l'économie à la maladie de Corona. Di ou yon adres pou matche agodisman fasilite sa la, Premier Ministre Chasne pose atasyon yon presepalman a sou pez maladi korona a sou set lisyen, ek set lisi, e ka kwe ki, ma gwe pez maladi korona fese a sou nou, se fo le sitwanyen kontinye viv ek espoa an se tan ki ka vini. Premier Ministre Chasne anbo ase ek apresye poje nouvo sa la, ki koute 30 milyon dola men wiche. Premier ministre, oui, monsieur, c'est une grande compagnie, c'est le chef de Stellas, pour tenir le commitment pour agrandir le business, malgré la maladie de Corona, par de plusieurs autres business, qui a fait qu'il y ait toujours, si pour agrandir, et bien, vous restez gardé toujours. Premier ministre, vous avez déclaré que le business, c'est le chef de Stellas, qui a apporté de bons bénéfices économiques à trois façons pour payer. Il y a une façon, côté de la production de diverses articles, ou de différents produits naturels que les compagnies ont. En partikele, kom kompanyan javiw e ka plate kan. Yon lot se program de fabrike, ek denye se proje de turistik. Pwe mens la fe kompren ki, tout sa ka osi abwa se relasyon biznis an wujo korib la, ek osi ACP etenasyonal. Pwe mens chasne veti ki, pou set li si ka kontinye fe progwe an de gwe etenasyonal, se fo nou tout abwa se tout le twa program sa la. Moun ki ni bwizen asistans de registrasyon an biwo servis elektwal. Pe ni pou aspeye an titan an plis pou touve de gwe servis sala yon ni bwizen. Si asistans chef ofisye an biwo elektwal ki di sa. Selon madam Olympia Lanel, sou pa ni tout se nesesite ki ou mewite yon ofisye ka yon la pou asisto an ki sa ou si pose fe. Nou ka yon vle sa si ou pa te jemen yon kad, sou pa le sistem nan pies kote. Evek le madam nan fini fe sa, sou ou pa te jemen ni an kado, ki si lon informasyon ka manche, nou ni an paj kote ki ni tout se servis la nou ka ou fe, so si ou vini pou pwemye fwa ou, ek ou pa te ni batiste ou, se paj la ka idou ki sa ou bouzwen pou fe sa servis la, ek ou ka ni pou vie pou fe sa. Lo ou ou fini fe sa, si ou ni tout informasyon, yo ka ifo ou, SPE, yon ka yon mette informasyon le sistem nan yon ka yon fwo SPE li mo, yon ka yon kouye, den yon ka yon fwo ale kote yon moun ka yon interview. Lò ou yon vè yon proses sa, si kote yon ka yon tiye potwe ou, yon ka yon skan dwe tou, evek yon ka yon dou ki jou pou vye vini pwen ID card la. Pou pwen ID card la, yon ka yon ba wan ou isi, pou dou ki dat pou vye, evek lò, sa ka yon pwen sek jou. Me si, Le yo dou ki jou pou viye, si ou pa sa vini pa ko ou. La ni an let oferizasyon ou sa fen jis di pesi e ba ou, evek an moun sa vini pwen an le ba ou. Dipatman le fore, wisetman, te chen yon seremoni pou prezate pri pou yo ki touve la viktwa a de participasyon de kompetisyon an obzovans jounen des afè de lo. Kompetisyon an se te an obzovans jounen des afè de lo a la te a, ek jounen de le fowe. Tout sa se te pou fè publik la pli o koua. Epi epotans le fowe ek nesesite pou proteje wisous naturel pe ya ek la te a. 
pour yon te sa trouve kalifye pour compétition sa la, yon te ni prebima pour tirer pour tuer yo, ala yon levi yon man naturel, kote ki ni plan ek lot bel te ressource naturel, ek explike ki manye levi yon man sa la ka afekte la vou a de yon fa sokri pozitif. Chef officier a departement le fwe, Alwen Donnelly, wanforse se gwen wol ki se aktivite sa la ka jwe pou fe publik la pli okouan e pi poblem kote moun ka kontwini detwi le fwe, ek manye moun ka kontwini gate wè sos natiwel a la terre. I komplimante se participan pou ka engaje da yon program kon sa pou ende proteje wè sos natiwel ek viv natiwel pe yi set le si. Direkte ajans pou menajman de wè sos dlo a pe yi la. Jason Ernest, ekouraje se participan pou kontwini an efo pou fe publik la pli sensib pou importans pou proteje wè sos natiwel pe yi la. Yon achote ki, e ka wè se participan kon abasad pou la fami yo, zami ek komin nan pou si mouje mesaj sa la. Yo te chwazi yon premye ek dezyem plas pou yo ki gwen kompetisyon an soti ni an fasad nord e sot pe la. Se participan ki gwen touve tablet Samsung, telefon mobil, an basi pou South East Coast Project. Ek se konsa nou atlou bout novel la. Mou ka remesyo otan pou ka gade. Pour avoir une invitation, je ne peux pas considérer qu'on se fait la vie. Je ne peux pas avoir une autre nouvelle. À quoi est-ce que ça Je ne peux pas avoir une autre nouvelle. Merci à Pearl Primus. Et ça nous amène à la fin de NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.